will be healed, Lord. Um, even through the word on this morning. Even through your spirit on this morning, God. Um, oh, God, we thank you, Lord, right now, Lord. Um, oh, God, even for deliverance, Lord. Those souls that are captive, Lord. Um, oh, God, to save and bound, Lord. Um, oh, God, we ask you, Lord, that you will release them, God, in the name of Jesus. Um, let your word fall on good ground, Lord. Um, oh, God, that it may take root, Lord. Um, that we may grow thereby, Lord. Um, oh, God, give us ears to hear, Lord. Um, what you have to say unto our churches on this morning, God. Um, oh, God, we appreciate to right now, Lord. You are so great. You are so mighty. Awesome. You are so Thank powerful, Lord. Powerful, Lord. powerful, Lord. We thank you, God. Oh, God, because we know, Lord, that you are in control, Lord. We thank you right now, Lord. Even, Lord, on this morning, Lord, how you have brought us here, Lord. Oh, God, for a purpose, Lord. Oh, God, we're living with a purpose, God. And we thank you right now, Lord. For we know, Lord, that our purpose is to live for you, Lord. That it is, Lord, a kingdom purpose, Lord. On this morning, Lord. Oh, God, we just appreciate Appreciate you right now, Lord. We ask you, Lord, that you will continue, Lord. Even as the woman of God brings forth the word on today, Lord. Um, oh, God, we know that your word is already blessed, Lord. Um, it's already anointed, Lord. Um, oh, God, God we just you. asking that you release it with power and demonstration, God. Um, oh, God, that every soul, every ear that hears, Lord, um, may be changed, Lord. Um, by the power and authority of Jesus Christ, Lord. Um, we thank you for this day, Lord. Um, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The next voice you will hear will be LaShawn Aiden. Amen. 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 Good morning Amen. once again. Amen. I'm here with Amen. our announcements this morning. Amen. We are the Dream Center. We are located Amen. at 636 Northland Boulevard, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45240. We're a suburb of uh, Cincinnati, actually located in Forest Park. Um, our Sunday morning sessions Come are held morning. from Good 9 to 10 a.m. On Mondays, we have our men's empowerment session from 7 to 8 p.m. Also, um, this weekend, um, coming up the, the first through the third, there will be um, Deliver America in Atlanta um, this weekend. And it's in a suburb of Buckhead. It'll be uh, with a, a Apostle nice. Robert Summers, Prophetess Dixie Summers, uh, Sophia Ruffin, and Pastor Lance Delashment. Yes, so that'll amen. be the first through the third in Atlanta. And there will be no recap Thursday this Thursday, the 1st of September. There will be no recap Thursday. And also, don't forget, our marriage empowerment sessions are the third Friday of every month. And this month, it'll be on the 16th of September. So we want you to um, make sure that you come out to that. And also, Give our, phone numbers to our phone number is... Uh, for the Dream Center is 513-832-8070. So you can call that line for prayer. Uh, you can also follow us on Facebook. Also, you can follow us on Periscope. And you can also um, check out our website, which is dream, D-R-E-E-M-M dot right. Amen. Amen, amen. 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 Now the woman of the hour. Who's going to come and give us the word this morning is Deborah Edwards. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Isn't God a good God? Come on and just give him some praise this morning. He's a, he's a wonderful God. I love him so much. He's an awesome God. You know, every uh, morning as part of my prayer, I always reference him as the Elohim God. And I said, Lord, you know, I'm trying not to be repetitious, but there will never be a day that I wake up that you're not the creator. That's right. that, there will never be a day. And every day I thank you because I know that even what I need now, you can speak it and it can come into existence. So I just honor him every day for being the Lord God, our creator. He is an all mighty God, the El Shaddai, the many breasted God. That means that no matter what you need and what I need, if we need it at the same time, guess what? He's a big God and because he's El Shaddai, he can supply it. I mean, he, he's got enough breasts to feed all of us. And I just thank him for his love. I thank him for being with us all the time, for being Jehovah Shabbat, the Lord God that wars on our behalf. I just thank him because he's a good God today. I honor him as my healer today. I thank him for restoring us today. I just love him with all of my heart with all of my soul and I thank him for every opportunity 
He gives me to declare his word and to show forth his love because he loves us so much. He loves you so much. You know what? Um, on my job, we uh, when I get ready to do our worship service in the middle of the week, one of the songs that we have to sing, because it's a couple of the residents' favorite songs, is Jesus Loves Me. Yeah. Jesus Loves Me, This I Know. Not because I did right, uh -huh. not because I dotted every I, not because I crossed every T, because uh -huh. the Bible says so. Yes. He just loves me like that. And he just loves you like that. So I'm just a grateful daughter today. And I want you to be grateful and to just buckle up your seatbelts yes. because we've got some things in store for you today. Oh, yes. I tell you yes. the truth. I love the Lord. You know, normally when I get here in the morning, I have a few minutes to like just really go back over uh, what I what God has given me. And but this this morning we had such a powerful prayer time that I didn't have a chance to go back and look at everything. So I'm going to shoot from the hip today. I'm just going to try to remember it the way that God gave it to me because it is loaded. It is really loaded, but God loves you so much that guess what? We're going to talk about Lord of Bar. Yeah. All right, that's good. That's good. Who dropped you? All right. That's what we're going to talk about today. We're coming to get some people out of Lord of Bar. There are some people that don't even know that they are in Lord of Bar. And if you don't know what Lord of Bar was, let me just tell you about it a little bit. Lord of Bar was just a slum area, you know. It was a place that was destitute. If you look up at the meaning of Lord of Bar, it means a place that has no pastor. And you know that in the Old Testament, Anytime you were prospering, it meant that you had a land full of water because prosperity came by how many, how, how, your, how big your flock was. Because if you had flock, that's what they, they sold. That's how they made their living. So if you had a land that was full of water, then that means you had what? Green pastures. Don't you remember David said that the Lord, you know, I'm laying down besides what? Green pastures. Because when you have green pastures, what happens? Your soul gets restored. But in Lodabar, there were no green pastures. Now, Lodabar was like a, 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 a low-income project area. Now, everything went, went bad in Lodabar. When people are in there, they, they know that this is what they know. This is how they live. They haven't come outside of Lodabar. Wow. And as I was thinking about this message, I was thinking about how uh, when I was a, a little girl, we grew up. Grew, I grew up in a in a nice neighborhood. Um, we had a brick house, and I guess the house sat on maybe maybe two acres, mom, maybe two acres of land. But I'm gonna tell you, we had so many rules. Uh -huh. Now I had to catch the bus to go to school because I didn't go to school in my neighborhood. Uh -huh. I had to catch the bus to go to school, and I would pass by an area that we could consider a bar. Uh -huh. And the kids would be out playing and having a good time. Then I said, when I grow up, I'm going to live in the projects. Because <laughs> it just looked like they didn't have any rules. They were just all out. Because you know what? Sometimes you don't know who you are. You don't know what's in you. You don't know how God has positioned you. So even though I was in what they probably, they probably wanted to live where I live, but they didn't know what I had to go through. They didn't know the restrictions. And guess what? As an adult, I'm thinking I had a good life. But you know, when you're a child, you don't realize how God is positioning you and posturing you, and you take things for granted. But when you grow up, you understand what David said, that when I was a child, I thought as a child. You know, I speak as a child. But when I became an adult, I started seeing things a little bit differently. Now, when you see things a little bit differently, it gives you a different perspective on life, and you begin to know who you are. Yes, 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 yes. A lot of people are in low bar because they don't know who they are. Ah, my Lord. They don't know who they belong to. Right. Yes. And so the first time that we hear about Lodabar, it is when Absalom has risen up against David, his own son, has risen up against him, right? His own son has risen up against him, and he's on the run. He could have given orders to kill Absalom, but that's his baby. Uh -huh. Parents, you know how many parents we got here. You understand, especially if your parents over teenagers. You understand that sometimes they will rise up against you, but you still don't want them hurt. Sometimes they talk back and you want to knock their teeth out, but you still don't want them hurt. Sometimes they rise up against you and you want to put them out, but you still don't want them hurt. You just want them to learn a lesson. That's right. That's all. He just wanted to learn a lesson. Right. So David just was trying to figure out a way for Absalom to learn a lesson because he didn't 
want to hurt him. So he goes on the run and he goes to a place where there's somebody in Lodabar that got some money. Yeah, uh-huh. Y'all know the people that, that have money in Lodabar. You might look at uh, a place that's low income, but when it look on the outside, but when you walk into their houses, it's decked out. Right. Come on, right. come on. You're like, wait a oh, minute. Oh, that's good, Deborah. Yeah. That's good. Wait a minute. How do the inside of your house look like this? Uh -huh. Right. You know how? I mean, I remember um, as, as a hospice chaplain, I had a patient down at Over the Rhine. And so outside, and this was before they really start building it up. So outside, it looked like just a big building that, that might have looked like it needed to be condemned. Mm -hmm. But when I went inside, I said, shoot, I might move down here. Yeah. <laughs> because everybody in Lodabar was not at a poverty-stricken level. They were able to help and sustain the city. Yeah. So as David is on the run, one of the, the princes or the kings or the governor or mayor, mayor whatever you want to call him, be, began to feed David, gave him enough food and stuff to sustain him, but he was still in Lodabar. Mm. Still in Lodabar. Still a place without pasture where nothing could really grow. And so in Lodabar, I just love this message. And you know what? You're not going to get it all today because we have somebody who came out of Lodabar this week. And they're going to come and share their their story with you because you know that we are a deliverance ministry, right? Yeah. And so we're going to teach you. We're not only going to um, this is good, uh, cast out the demons, but we're going to teach you because you've got to first recognize that they're there. Right. You've got to first recognize that the spirits are there because if you don't recognize that they're there, then you will not submit to God. And the only when you submit to God, it says what? And resist the enemy, he'll flee from you. Yeah. But the enemy has cloaked a lot of people using a spirit, a uh, blocking spirit and a blinding spirit because he doesn't even want you to know that they're there. He doesn't want you to know that you are in a load of bar state. Doesn't want you to know that. Yeah. And so oh, what we do on. here at the Dream Center, we let you know that not only is he there, but then we let you know that you have the power uh -huh. to kick him out. Yeah. You have the power That's to bind him up. You have yeah. the power to loose him away, not only from you, but uh, away from everything that pertains to you. Uh -huh. And you have the authority to do so. Yes. Yes. The enemy yes. doesn't want Come you on. to know that That's you have right. the authority right. to do so. Mm -hmm. But here at the Dream Center, we're going to let you know. So anyway... My scripture text, in case I don't get to it, for real, for real. <laughs> Barring from Cecilia in real life. Second Samuel, the fourth chapter. So Lodabar, here we have, dear, okay, David has already been on the run. And now listen, Saul and Jonathan have been murdered. And if you know history, you know that any time a king was murdered, that whoever it was that killed him, that they would go on and kill all of the children, all of the descendants, because they wanted to eradicate, eradicate, eradicate the whole family. They didn't want anybody to come up and oppose them. Now, let me tell you something. Don't you know that when the enemy comes after you as a parent, he does not, he's not just coming at you, but he figures that if he can get you out of the way, if he can take you out, then he has access to your seed. Come on. He's never just coming after you. Uh -huh. You are not, you, you know what? You ain't that big and bad enough. He's got to take everybody out that's connected with you. Right. So that's right. why it is imperative that you make sure you submit to God, that you find out by submitting to God who you are in him, that you are a kingdom citizen. Right. You understand that when Jesus came, he didn't take, just come because he was the son of God. He came because he was the son Amen. of God to set good, you free. Good, right? He came to let you know that this it doesn't stop here. That there is another kingdom coming. And guess what? We get to taste that kingdom here on earth, but we get to live in it when we get to glory. Come he on. says, I'm bringing my kingdom down from heaven because I want you to know what's, pre what's prepared for you. I want to give you a taste of it. So guess what? I want you to start preparing now. Yes. Pre start preparing now to live in this kingdom. Uh, and guess oh, what? He said, that's the only way uh -huh. you're going to be able to live in it is if you're free. Come on, come on. He said, that's why I'm going to give you authority to bind. That's why I'm going to give you authority to loose, and I'm going to stand over my word. Yes. Remember last week, a uh, week before last, I gave an example of a, a vision that God had given me where my granddaughter was standing over the enemy, shouting at him, telling him to go. And then I went and stood over her, and I said, that's right. Don't you know that that's how God is? Yes. When you begin to speak to the enemy using the authority of Jesus, don't you know that the enemy recognized God standing behind you, yes. saying, yes. Get out of her life. Get out of her marriage. Get out of the ministry. Yes. 
you are never alone. My. You are never alone. And I want you to know that I know by self-experience that the enemy will might try to make you think that you are alone. My God. He'll try to make you think that you got to fight this thing all by yourself. Uh -huh. But don't you know the host of heaven mm. is standing behind you? Well, the word of God says, I've given my angels charge over you yes. to protect you in all of your ways, oh, to on. lift you up my so that you don't God. even stop your toe. Yes. Jesus. There's a host of, of heaven that angels on, right. are fighting for us. But you got to be postured. Right. You got to be in right position. Yeah. Ain't nothing worse than somebody trying to claim the promises of God without being a son of God. Oh, you got to be a son or daughter of God. You got to be the daughter of the Most High God mm. in order to get what's inherited to you. So let me That's get good. to Lodabar. So Jonathan and Saul are killed. And Jonathan has a son, Mephibosheth, that's five years old. And so his nurse is very, I mean, she's like a mother to him, right? And so she grabs him and she begins to run so she can hide, but she drops him. Mm -hmm. uh. His caretaker. It's loaded. Mm. It's loaded. Drops him. Wow. Because she wants to save him. Amen. But she drops him. Mm. And picks him up in such a hurry that she doesn't even realize it right then and there, that his feet are broken. My God. His feet are broken. And so he would never walk on those feet again. My Lord. And she takes him to Lodabar. So Lodabar was designed that if you were either, if you were in Lodabar, you were either in exile or you were in hiding. We know that when David went to Lodabar, he was in exile. He was trying to make sure that there was a place of safety he could go to before he returned to the palace. But when Mahibosheth went, he went in hiding. Uh -huh. He went in hiding. Don't you know that God can hide you? Oh, yes. And some of the most crazy places. Oh, yeah. So God can hide you, but just make sure that it's God. If you've got to go to a place like that, just make sure it's God. But we're going to expose the enemy today. And, and next week, we're going to expose him a little bit more. Come because on, some on. of you are in Lodabar, and it's not the will of God. That's right. Yeah. It is not the will of God. Who dropped you? Mm -hmm. yeah. Who dropped you? Yeah. Don't you understand that as... The whole reason that uh, Saul was killed and, and Jonathan was killed was because Saul refused to obey God. Uh -huh. He refused to walk upright before God. And, and, and maybe you can say, well, he didn't, he didn't know any better. Oh, but there was a word of the Lord from the prophets of God. Right. The problem is sometimes when we're walking in error, sometimes when we refuse to obey God, it's because we have refused to listen to the voice of God through his prophets yes, and yes. through his and through just his daughters and sons. Come on. You ain't got to be a prophet to deliver a message. Come on. Come on. That's the truth. You ain't got to be a prophet That's right. to deliver a message. The doggone jackass wasn't a prophet. But he got the message through. Amen. He got the message through the paper. That's right. Said, so look here, you out of order. So God had sent Samuel to say, Saul, you out of order. Uh -huh. But Saul refused to repent. He refused. He had no right going into that battle. Who dropped you? So he goes into a battle that he's not supposed to. And if you know the history, he put on the priestly robe right before the battle because he was waiting on Samuel. And he wasn't supposed to do that. Stay in your lane. Mm -hmm. right. Come on, stay come on, lane. come on. Okay. That's right. Whatever God has called you to do, stay in your lane. Yeah, Don't right. ever try to borrow somebody's anointing. Stay in your lane yeah, because right. God's going to give you everything you need to do what he's called you to do. Yeah. Never try to do what somebody else is doing because it looks good. One of our team members said to me last week, she said, "What? Wh why we can't call you pastor? She said, I was getting ready to uh, write, a, write a friend of mine, and I was getting ready to type, my pastor said, yada, yada, yada. She said, why do you, we can't call you pastor? And I, t I gave her my reason why. But then I figured, I said, you know what? Joyce Myers is known as Joyce Myers yeah. all over the world. Yeah. All over the world, you know, she's known as Joyce Myers. Yeah. Not apostle, not pastor, not bishop. Sometimes titles can move 
move you out of the way. Amen. It can take you away, and then you can try to hide. Titles can become a motor bar for you. Yes. Because when you get a title, you feel like you've got to live up to this expectation. So when sin creeps in, you don't want to go and ask for help. Because you got a title. When the enemy comes in, you don't want to ask for help because you got a title. When God sends a word to you, you don't want to listen to somebody that don't have a title because you got a title. You're in Lodabar. You're in Lodabar. That's good. Because the word of the Lord can't get to you. Nothing grows in Lodabar. There's no life there. And the word of God brings life. It breathes life. And if the word of God can't get to you, you're in Lola Bar. Who dropped you? somebody today. Who dropped you? So anyway, because Saul was out of place, his grandson got dropped. Have you ever wondered? Let me tell you. The reason why a lot of uh, uh, adults are, are, are in the place they're in in their mind is because their fathers dropped them. Mm. That's, that's a good their fathers dropped them. You say, well, Deborah, how? How he dropped them? When he left the home, that's right. he dropped them. My God. If he stayed in the home and did like Saul and then submit to the word of God, he dropped them. Amen. He dropped them. And you said, well, why is it the fathers? Because I'm talking about Saul. That's right. I'm talking about Lodabar. Oh, come on. Saul that's was out of order. Uh -huh. out of and because order. he was out of order, his grandson got dropped. Right. Think about this. Because if he would have did what God told him to do, he would have been able to carry one generation to the next. Because he would have been able to feed them and sustain them with what, with what they need. When you as a father drop your daughter, guess what? You cannot walk her down the aisle. Haven't you ever wondered why fathers are supposed to walk their daughters down the aisle? Because when they walk them down the aisle, they're saying, I have covered her. I have carried her. I have sustained her. I've taken care of her. Now I'm going to pass her over to you. Your job is to cover her. Your job is to protect her. Your job is to sustain her. But when you drop the ball, Wow, my God. When you drop your daughters, then they become fragmented. They lose their identity because you fail. You fail to listen to the word of God. You fail to raise your children the way God told you to. So they are scattered in their mind. They're scattered in their mind. They're scattered in their thinking. They lose their identity. So um, the Hibbishev stays in Lodabar. And it says when David, after David, get this. After David obtained the promise that God gave to Abraham. David had defeated all the enemies on the land that God promised to Abraham. Mm. God promised it to Abraham, but here David gets to experience it. We talking about generational curses and blessings, okay? Oh, yeah, oh, David yeah. gets to experience it. So David is sitting down looking around saying, all is good, all is good, but I made a covenant of vow to my friend. Ah, my God, I thank you. I made a covenant of vow to my friend. Is there anybody left in my friend's family? Is there anybody left? And when they when they tell him about Jonathan's son, and he sends for him right away. Now remember, I just said that when you were dropped, when you were dropped, I said it leaves you scattered. It leaves you in a place where you don't know your identity, right? And so here he has become comfortable in Lodabar because you know he even had a son. When he, he grew up in Lodabar, he became comfortable there. Mm -hmm. I may be crippled, crippled, but I'm comfortable here. Mm -hmm. I may not be able to walk upright, but I'm comfortable here. Some of you have been in Lodabar for so long, you're comfortable. Oh. You're not even challenging your surroundings. You don't even see yourself stepping out. You don't even see yourself growing because you've gotten comfortable yeah. in the walk yeah. that you're in. Mm -hmm. But I'm challenging you today to shake yourself. Oh. Look beyond yourself. That's good. That's Look good. to the king. So his mind, his feet is crippled, but so is his mind and is scattered and, and he doesn't even realize it. So when David comes and, and he's scared to even go before David because he knows history. Mm -hmm. He knows that he's supposed to be taken out. And so when David said, no, 
I came to bless you. Uh -huh. Jesus said, no, I came to bless you. I know the history. I know your family history. Uh -huh. I know what your grandmama did. I know what your great granddaddy did. I know the history, but I'm here to bless you. I'm going to give you everything you need to come out of Lodabar. I've been waiting for you. I've got these gifts for you. I've got these treasures for you. I'm waiting for you because I'm bringing you out of Lodabar. So even as, John, as Mahibosheth goes before David, and David began to decree what it is that he, he wants to do for him. You know what he says? It's in, in the Message Bible, he says, my man, you know, my, I'm scattered. It says his brain was scattered. And he was like, why? Why would you look to bless a dog like me? Yes. A dog like me. My and God. dogs were considered scavengers. Mm -hmm. You know what scavengers mm -hmm. are. They don't own nothing, but they just go from place to place. Some of you have been going from place to place yes. just to get enough to sustain you. Yes. When Jesus is saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Oh, Come yeah. on out of you Lord better teach today. Oh my The gosh. kingdom of That's heaven right. is at hand. I've got all of this that I'm yeah. going to give you. He had been in Lord of God for so long that he, he couldn't even fathom what it might be like to live as the king's kid. He didn't know that it had already been, been foretold. I mean, his dad, your granddaddy, the first king of Israel. But he couldn't imagine it because he didn't remember the palace. He didn't remember the houses. But David, the king, he said, I got it. Jesus said, I got it. You ain't got to remember right now. But if you just take a step forward, Mm. Come on out of Lodabar. Yes, yes. I'm challenging fathers mm. to rise up. Amen. I don't care if your child is 50 years old. That's right. Get them out of Lodabar. Yes. Because there are many young men and there are I mean, men and many women that have a little boy trapped on the inside and a little girl trapped on the inside Amen. because they got dropped. That's so true. Yes. They yes. got dropped. Mm -hmm. Get them out of Lodabar. Yes. Now, this oh God. week. Oh, God. We had to, you know I got a lot to say. You know I got a lot to say about this, right? But I want you to see the manifestation of what I'm talking about. Come on. So this week, we had to get somebody out of Lodabar. Uh -huh. And so let me tell you something. Those spirits, when they see you. Come on. When they come, they know your the assignment on your life. That's right. I remember, I'm talking about what I know. I remember being in a motor bar estate and not even knowing it. Amen. Oh yes. yes. Not even That's knowing real. it. That's real. That's real. I remember um, making a hundred and thirteen dollars a week. Mm -hmm. My rent was three hundred dollars a month, mm -hmm. and I know some of you've heard this, but just hold on. $300 a month. So that left me with like $140. Pay the phone bill. Pay the gas bill. Mm -hmm. Buy groceries. Mm -hmm. Transportation back and forth to work. Mm -hmm. And Lord, don't let my girls have to need some clothes. Because mm -hmm. I was a single parent at that time. Mm -hmm. And get this. So used to just being a scavenger. Mm -hmm. Making ends meet. I didn't want to go to my parents. I didn't want to go to my siblings. And so even when I tried to get help from the state, and I said, I need to be able to take my children to the doctor. And you know what they told me? You make too much money. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. I got two little girls that need to be fed. They said, well, I said, my rent is $300 a month. They said, well, you need to um, find a cheaper place to live. And I was like, I'm from Atlanta. I don't know Cincinnati. Uh, you know, I don't know Cincinnati, and, and I don't know where to go. And so they said, well, you can go to these particular apartments. And I was so excited, because I don't know Cincinnati, right? Mm -hmm. And so I got, I told my father, I said, mm -hmm. they said I can live in these apartments, and it won't cost me $300 a month. And my dad dropped his head, and he, because he calls me by my middle name, he said, Renee, he said, do you know where those apartments are? And I said, no, I don't. 
He said, oh, let's take a ride. And my dad took me there. And it was an actual physical motor bar. And I cried so hard. And I said, I went back to downtown and I told that lady, I said, let me tell you one thing. I said, I've got two girls and I will work three jobs if I have to, to keep my kids from being raised in that atmosphere. How dare you mm -hmm. tell me? Now, I was just looking at the physical part, mm -hmm. but there was a mental motor bar mm -hmm. in, my play, in my mind. So when I meet my, my husband, when I meet him, I'm so used to just going to the, to the grocery store and, and stretching this and stretching that and, and being creative so that my kids wouldn't go, go hungry. And if I didn't eat, it was okay, but my kids had to eat. And so I meet my husband, and he sweeps me off my feet. And I know you guys got to hear this part. I know you've heard this other part before. And so he's sweeping me off my feet, and he's not asking me to sleep with him. I got a load of our mentality. Mm. So I'm thinking, if he's paying my bills, if he's buying stuff for my children, I'm supposed to sleep with him. Isn't that what you do? I'm supposed to drop it like it's hot. Isn't that what you will do? Uh -huh. And so I started, I just got off this topic about the seducing spirit, right? Uh -huh. So I started trying to seduce him, mm -hmm. and he wouldn't buy me. Come on, I was like, wait a minute. And I knew I was fine, uh -huh. and I knew I was cute. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I'm like, what is the problem? He was spending the night at my house, and I was putting on some nice little negligees, uh -huh. and he wouldn't buy me. Mm -hmm. And finally I said, what is your problem? I just need to know because of my mentality is this is what you're supposed to do. I didn't know about the kingdom. I didn't know that in the kingdom the man is supposed to do that if you never open your legs. And you're not supposed to until he's your husband. That's right. That's kingdom. That's right. If you're opening your legs for somebody that's not your spouse, you're in Lodabar. Come on, come on now. You're in Lodabar. That's right. So I asked him, I said, what's your problem? And he said, you might enjoy yourself tonight, but you will hate yourself in the morning. Come on, because he could see good. in Come me on. what I couldn't see in myself. He said, because I know you are a Christian. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking... Most of the Christians I know. Right, right. right. Come on, come on. They doing this too. Right. So he kept blessing me. He kept I'm blessing me. And finally I said, yes. okay, I'm not going to, if I can't sleep with him, I got to bless him. I got to, and I didn't use the word bless, but I wanted to thank him. Mm -hmm. And so I said, I tell you what, when I get back from Atlanta, I'm going to cook dinner for you to thank you for being so kind to me and my children. And he said, uh, okay, because, you know, I didn't know that he really liked to eat. No, he really liked to eat. <laughs> Anybody that know my husband know he really liked to eat. And so um, he called me that Saturday, and he said, what time do you get off work? And I told him. I said, why? He said, well, I need to take you to the grocery store. And I said, why? I said, I got it. And he said, no, I will never put... Uh, my feet under your table if I don't put the food on top of your table. All right. Now see, I, I'm in man. motor bar, so I'm not expecting somebody to treat me like that. Come on, come on. Because I'm in motor bar. Talk about Y'all know bar. what I'm talking about. My God, you know my Lord, these women Jesus. that get all of this money is money, and especially during tax time, and you're going to buy a man. you in motor bar. Right. Come on, come on. Right. Right. You ain't supposed to be trying to buy him. He's supposed to buy you. Because the word of God says when a man found a wife, he finds a good thing. Act like a good thing and come out of Lola Bar. Come on, come on, come on. But when you in Lola Bar, you think you got to, you got to, he's supposed to wine and dine you. But because you're in Lola Bar, you think you got to wine and dine him. So he takes me to the store. And remember, I got that scavenger mentality like Mahibashev. Uh -huh. And so I go to the area of the meat department where the meat has been marked down. Mm -hmm. And he looks at me and he says, what are you doing? And I said, um, I'm looking for a roast. He said, right in that area? <laughs> I said, yeah. He said, as long as you are with me, don't you ever go to this area again to buy any meat. My God, my Lord, Jesus. He took me out of Lola Bar. Mm, my God. By his actions, he began to transform my thinking. Mm -hmm. 
Because yes. I didn't know, I had been in Lola Bar so long, I didn't know what a queen was supposed to be treated like. Oh that's good, my Lord. God, that's my good. Lord Jesus. I'm, Deborah. I'm thinking that I'm supposed to yeah, just be scavenging. I'm supposed to be just making ends meet, going from one situation mm. to the other. Uh -huh. But this week, this week, there was a young lady that was in Lola Bar. Yeah. And the enemy had came at her so strong. Because the enemy came at her because he knew her destiny. Right. Just like he knew mine. That's right. And I, well, how, how am I on time? Because well, we, we need some time here. 25 minutes. Okay. The enemy knew. He knew that there was an assignment on my life. Mm -hmm. So he had to try to destroy my mind. He had to try to destroy my self-worth so that I wouldn't know who I was. So that when, even though all my life I had been told that the hand of God was on my life, but because I didn't see nobody living it. Mm -hmm. That's, it. Mm. That's a good word. What do you mean the hand of God is on my life? Uh -huh. My God, my Lord. What do you mean that God is calling me uh, and he's going to have me speak before thousands because there was, what, 50 people strong in my church? What does speaking before thousands look like? I had no vision. My Lord. So mentally, I stayed in Lula Bar. Mm. So this young lady, get this, y'all gonna enjoy this, as she prepares to come down. As she, as we begin to take her through deliverance, I said, one of them told me their name, and I said, what is your assignment? They said, she's going to have some money. She's going to get a lot of money. And she talking about she going to use it for the kingdom of God. But we just laying still. Because as soon as she get that money, we going to cause her to spend all of it. And not one time of it will go to the kingdom. And I said, so that's your assignment? Yes. I said, as of right now, your assignment is terminated. And you're getting ready to come up out of her now in the name of Jesus. And they said, Deborah, you be. We know we got to leave. We know we coming out. I said, shut up and come out. We coming. We coming. Because she had made up her mind that she was tired of us. Mm, now, don't you see? She made up her mind. You got to be ready to let these things go. Come on. When you recognize that the enemy is coming after you, you got to make up your mind. You got to make up your mind that you're going to submit to God and you're going to resist the devil and then they will flee. Come on down, sweetheart. I tell you, I wish that we would have recorded that particular deliverance. Because there were so awesome many of them coming out. So I just want you to hear her. Go ahead, baby. Come, you can come here. Amen, amen, amen. This is Courtney, guys. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So I'm going to start from the beginning, and I just want everybody to know that maybe it's not so much of a believer, but uh, spirits and demons, they are real. Oh, yes, they are. This is a very real thing, and they don't want you to know that they exist, but they do. Oh, yes. So um, when I was a little girl, I was five years old, and I still remember um, God had brought it back to my mind. I'll, I'll give you some background information. Sometime around April of this past year, I had wrote my whole life story. Mm -hmm. And it was about 40 pages. One of my um, girlfriends was here, and I had let her read it, so she already knows. But when I was... Um, and spirits transfer, and they don't just come by themselves. They, they bring different emotions to you. If you're feeling like you're out of control, out of whack, that is, that is a demon. That is a spirit that is trying to, to take over your life. And um, when I was five years old, I remember I was uh, at daycare. And there was another little girl who always used to lay on her stomach on her hands. And um, one day I did it, and I, at five years old, I found myself masturbating. It was a spirit of perversion. Mm -hmm. So I'm not a child molester, I won't say that. Um, I never like molested any children, but that spirit took over my life for almost 25 years. Come on. And um, it was Exposed always as if it. like, I felt that I didn't need any help, or I couldn't go to my mom and, and talk to her, even though every day she would ask me, how are you doing, how's school going? And it was like I was all over the place. Come on. Um, I dealt with issues of like anxiety 
That, those, that's a demon. They call you can call it anxiety if you want to. Come that on. is a demon. I'm gonna call it what it is. Come, come on, come on. I dealt with depression. Girl, yes, come on. I dealt with thoughts and suicide. You know? Come on, that's all right. Come on. My hair was falling out, and then like I'm free. I don't even feel like oh, people are looking at me. I can wear my hair about you know my real hair. Um, and even when I was going through deliverance. For anybody that does not believe it, it is real. Like, I didn't even still remember I was witchcraft. Um, you know, people will try to send evil spirits to you. People that are um, speaking ill about you, don't you have to be careful with your verbiage, with Come what on. you say to people, with how you say things. You know, people think, oh, you know, we're just joking or... You know, you know, you may say like, girl, you a mess. Don't speak that on them. That's right. an ill wish. That is a demonic force that you are speaking That's to them in a joke. Right. It, and it is all in the mind. You really have to be careful what you say to people. Um, even like growing up, um, and my mom, she was pretty good with her finances. But that's a demonic force. If you don't know how to manage your money, right. it's like, well, what happened to my paycheck? Mm -hmm. That is a demonic force trying to cause destruction on your life. Like they manifest in so many different ways. Yes. And people are calling them like, oh, I need to go to counseling. If you are feeling depressed, if you are feeling anxious, if you are feeling sad, if one day you up, one day you down, that's not bipolar. That is a demonic force, a that's demon right. trying to take that's you good. out. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all right. of that is real. Yeah. And But you can come here to get prayer. You can come here to get deliverance. Yeah. And if you start having different feelings, write them down. Write them down. You can. You, you have already been given the authority from God to know what it is. You may not want to acknowledge it. Start writing this right. thing down. Amen. If today you feel like, oh, today is a good day, and then tomorrow you're like, well, yesterday was just okay, but you know, today I had these feelings or I thought these thoughts. Those thoughts are not from God. God wants you to live in a place of peace. He wants you to live in a place of safety. He wants you to live in a place of security. If you are just going around and you don't know how you're feeling and you feel lost and confused or you feel alone, that is not God. Those are demonic forces that are trying to kill you. Um, even so, something just so simple as um, going out like, oh, well, I'm going to go to the grocery store. I got to put this on. That's a spirit of vanity that is in your life that's operating. You have to really know what's going on. If you always feel like, I got to look this way or I got to go shopping. If you're always shopping, you spend up your whole check. That is an addiction. Anything that is that will lead you away from Christ, that will lead you away from Christ-like thoughts, those are addictions and those are spirits and you need to be delivered. If you feel um, any way, uh, Ms. Devon was talking earlier this week, and if you feel like, oh, I can't talk to my dad or I can't talk to my mom, that is the enemy trying to shut that relationship down because there is something that is there for you. Now, you cannot force anybody to, to love you. You cannot do it. If they choose not to, you, you just got to say, okay, I'm at peace with this and that's it. But when you have situations where, you know, like my dad, he was on, he was a crackhead. He was on drugs. He wasn't always that way, but that's how he ended up being and it killed him. It literally killed him. He died in 2015. And I didn't even know that I was dealing with spirits of abandonment and spirits of uh, feeling lonely. And and spirits come as, they bring friends. They ain't just coming by themselves. If, um, that spirit of abandonment, it brings loneliness. It brings fear. It brings depression. They all, it's all tied together to try to keep you bound up. That's it. Even now, um, coming down the aisle, I tried to feel like, oh, don't speak. I don't, you know, you don't want anybody to know what, what happened to you. That's when you tell them. That's when you explain oh, that story. Amen. 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 Like I said, a few months ago, it was uh, 40 pages, and God was pushing me. He was stretching me, and I wrote, I wrote 40 pages in two weeks, and I stay at home full time, so that's not easy. So, um, I had wrote my story and I let my mom read it and she, she didn't understand. She was like, you know, how could this have been going on in my own home? Mm -hmm. And I had no idea, you know, I always felt like we were a team and we were close and that I could talk to you about anything and you could talk to me. That's what that wants to do. The um, enemy wants to shut that relationship right. down That's right. to make you feel isolated, like nobody cares. If you are feeling that, 
if you are feeling that way, that is the, that are, those are spears. Those are demonic forces trying to trying to isolate you, trying to kill you, so they can keep on talking to you and say nobody loves you, nobody cares. But I have my whole family here to help me, That's and, right. um, to support you know, people for them. Amen. And even now, uh, I, I just I, I'm not alone. There are people here who can help you, and there are people here who do care. But you have to make a choice. And I remember when I had made that choice when I had got pregnant with my daughter. And I, like I said, when that spirit of perversion had came on me, it was a, like a, a whole life of promiscuous. Mm -hmm. Tried to eat my body up with disease, mm -hmm. tried to um, take over my mind and everything. And I, I still remember the day when God had delivered me from those diseases. Like one of them, I, uh, one of them I probably should still have because they say it ain't no cure. You can take medication for it to kind of control it. Mm -hmm. But God delivered me from that. I, I remember the day. And I was on the medication and I was told my daughter, I said, Lord, how am I on a medication? And is this still happening? Mm -hmm. And I went to the word, I had went to uh, my scripture keys and I read about everything that it says it affects, it affects your mental, it's pain and it was the skin. And I read them keys immediately, I was delivered. Two years, almost two years, I have been delivered from that sickness. You have to go to the word, you cannot medicate it. Come on, come on. You got to not counsel it. Come on, come on. You have to be delivered from it. You have to ask what you are coming to my life. I ask you to come into my life right now. And like I said, when I was, I'm not telling you to go out and have kids, but when I got pregnant with my daughter, I had made a decision. I said, I don't want to be that person. You know, I don't want to be that person. I want to be a better person for my daughter. I don't want her to have an example. I want her to have an example where she can be proud of me. She can say, you know, that's my mom. You know, she's she she um, does this and she's a good person and she uh, does her best and gives me her all. And you, but you have to make a choice. No one can lead you to deliverance. Like Miss Deborah was talking talking about last week. It does start in self-deliverance by the fact that you choose to no longer indulge in those behaviors Amen. that are essentially killing you. Right. It's killing you. That's if you're going around, like I said, the, the um, spirits and demons, they don't want you to even know that you have a problem. I always felt like, oh, well, that's them. I'm doing the same thing as them, but it ain't, you know, you know, they nasty. You know, not me. That is like blinders. Like come they don't on, want you on. to see the light. Mm -hmm. You know, if you are doing any type of behaviors that you cannot do, if Jesus were standing right next right, to you, right. you need to stop it. There it is. You need to stop. Right. Come on. Not trying to bring condemnation to anybody. Come on. But if Jesus were in the room with you, would you be doing what you were doing? That's right. And even it's like um, when I was living like a party lifestyle, spirits come together. You got drinking. That's right. You got drugging. Mm -hmm. You got dancing. Mm -hmm. Some people thinking like, oh, their little daughters is cute. They dancing until she's 15 and she's twerking on the little boy. And then you mad. Right. Wow. Stop come that on. right oh in the tracks. Don't let that rise up. Yeah. You have to say, uh uh, we don't do that in this house. That's right. Uh oh, your sons, they cussing and stuff. Girl, ha ha ha, daddy thinking it's funny until he's 15, he cussing you out. That's right. Mm. You have to stop it before it even gets to take root and manifest because it does, it they grow and That's they right. keep bringing friends. That's and right. it's like, okay, then you then you looking around and it's like, how did I get here? Mm. Did anybody ever seen somebody went to school with? Ten years later, they yeah, like, whoa, wow. they look wow. bad. Right. You know, right. stop it in its tracks. That's and just right. because you don't look like what you've been through, that's God's grace on your life. That's that's he loves you. God does love you. Amen. And like I said, you have to make a choice to say, this is enough. I am tired of this. Yeah. They say, um, sick and tired of being sick and tired. You don't even have to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. You just have to be tired. That's All right. right. Good. Good. This is enough. I've had enough. And that I made that decision. And even so, like, the enemy didn't even want me to come to the Dream Center. Like, didn't want me to invite my friend. Like, well, she going to think this is like some type of Satan... No, you people need help, and That's I just right. want That's everybody right. to get some help who wants to get some help because you do have to make a choice to say, this is enough. If you are feeling like, I, I was having a conversation with um, with my girlfriend, and I was like, you know, when I used to go to school, despite how much I had been told, like, Courtney, you are, you know, you're really smart. Like, people don't think this way, and some of your ideas and everything, I did not feel that way. 
I felt like I couldn't make it. If you're in school right now, as a teenager, as a young person, and you feel like, oh, I don't want to do this, or I can't do this, or it's too hard, that is the spirit trying to take over your mind. It's not hard. Right. I knew that it wasn't hard because I, it, even I saw myself in, in one of my girlfriend's kids when she when I would have talks with her, she would say, oh, well, my friends are, you can't worry about what your friend's doing. What is the call on your life? That's right. And that, and when you do get delivered, you have to leave some people behind. Because if they're still in that situation, just pray for them. But you have to say, I cannot hang out with you anymore. That's right. You know, I'm, it's not that I'm better than, than you, but I have chosen to go a different route. Exactly. And it's okay. They may not understand. Oh, she thinks she this. She thinks she that. You know what? I do think I'm this. I do right. think I'm a child of the most high God. I do know that God loves me. I do. That's another spirit. It's a seduction spirit trying to bring you back over That's to right. the party of times, trying to justify wrong behavior. Right. And that's just something, like I said, you have to make a choice to want to be a new person. And it's, it's, I'm not, it's not hard. When you get to that point where you say, I'm done with this, it's not even hard. Not even right. hard. That's you can word. just be like, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. I really want to see who I am in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. I really want to say, hey, you know, let me see what I can do. Let me see what God is going to do for me. This is my daughter. Amen. You know, and it's just you have to make a choice to say enough is enough. So if you need some help, you can come here. If you're feeling different emotions, you can come here and say, hey, I'm feeling this. I'm feeling this. I'm feeling this. I need some help to sort these feelings out, these emotions. Those emotions are spirits because anything that's driving you crazy where you can't get no peace at nighttime, where you can't get no peace in the daytime, that's not God. That is not God. So if you can come here 636 Northland, Northland Boulevard. Boulevard, and there are people who are here to help you, and not only will they help you, they follow up with you. Amen. Amen. They will text you. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be reading this scripture right here. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> you know, but God will send that word to them to say, tell her to read this. And and um, Miss Deborah, she didn't know, but I had needed that because I was feeling, after I got delivered, I was feeling almost like I was empty because I had been so comfortable Amen. and so used to those Amen. different e demonic emotions mm -hmm. that I didn't even know. Like, well, well what is this? Mm -hmm. I, I, I was feeling empty, <laughs> but you have to get filled up with the word of God oh, yeah, and right. the word of God will confirm God gives you the peace which surpasses all understanding. Amen. God loves you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Amen. He will, Isaiah 41, he will go and get you from that far away place. Right. God has not rejected you. And it's like, oh my God, like everything that you need is in the word of Amen. God. Right. And if you're looking for it somewhere else, that's not God. Amen. So I just want to let you know, you have to make a choice. Amen. And you have to stick with that choice. And don't just think like, oh, I made a choice to do better. You have to get all of that up out of you because they still just waiting around for you to mess up. That's right. So, so you, uh, I will advise you to come here and get some prayer and some help. And um, a long time ago, I had read something that said, yield to the process because it is a process. It's just not overnight. Right. It's just not, okay, today I'm delivered. It's a, a lifelong choice. You have to choose every day. Right. Like today, I'm going to choose to tell the truth. Today, I'm going to choose not to steal. Today, I'm going to choose not to spend up my whole paycheck. You have to, it's choices. It's all about choices. So I just want to say thank you for this deliverance ministry. And I know that God is doing some wonderful things for this ministry. Amen. 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 What you got to say? She said it's real, yes. and it's about choices. you got to make that choice. And I told you that even the demon knew that she had made the choice because he said we knew we was going to leave before she even got here. You know, she, they knew that that separation had started. But I want you to know she didn't just come that day. She had been coming. And so little by little, the Holy Spirit had been breaking those walls down. You can't just stay in your house and say, okay, I'm going to go get delivered. No, some of those walls have to be broken down. And the walls that are built up in your mind, your thought has to be changed. It's a process. And though the demons know it. They know. That's why he said we're laying dormant. There are a lot of you who are carrying spirits that have been there since you were a child, That's and right. they're just waiting. That's right. They're waiting because they know that God has need of you, and they want to try to destroy you. No, 
now. They want to try to flood you so much that you can't even think. That's right. It's a lying spirit. Uh-huh. And I tell you this part, and I know we got to go, but as we were taking her through deliverance, and I won't give you the demon name because I won't give him that much credit, but um, say I cast out the demon and his name was Apple. So I say, Apple, you coming out and you coming out now in the name of Jesus, go. And so she, she started doing what she do and, and getting that thing out. And um, then um, as she was heaving, uh, another voice came out of her. And I said, who are you? He said, I'm orange. And I looked at him. I said, you lying demon. You are still apple. And he looked at me and said, how you know? I was trying to trick you. How you know I was a lying spirit? They were lying to spirit. Yes, they were. They don't even, they, sometimes when you go through a deliver, deliverance, it is a process. And they will try to convince you that you are not. It's a lying spirit. They'll try to convince you that you lying. haven't been delivered. That's, That's why she says that lies. every day you've got to make a decision. I'm not going to do what I did yesterday. Right. Because what I did yesterday opened the door to allow the enemy to come in. Right. And you know what one of the demons said to me through her? He said that we, we, we almost had her. To the point where she was ready to kill herself. And then she had that baby. And she had the nerve to dedicate that baby back to God. So we had to work harder. My Look God. at that. Oh. Look at that. They know what's on your life. That's right. But God always got a ram in the bush. Yes, and for her, it was her daughter. She began to look beyond herself and say, but not my child. Some of you parents have got to look beyond yourself and stop doing what you think you're big enough and bad enough and grown enough to do and say, but not my child. I've got to sh- change some things. I've got to close some doors so the enemy can't come after my child. Yes. Can't come after my marriage. Can't have my grandchildren. And I know we out of time. We out of time, aren't we? But to God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory. I thank all of you. I thank you so much. Thank you, Courtney, for sharing that. Thank you so much. I just wish we could go on and and just share so much. But there will be another opportunity for us to let you know just how the demons work. And you'll understand why God gave you power and authority. Because the kingdom of God is at hand. Stand to your feet. Thank you all. Thank you, parents. What an awesome word, right? Oh, my gosh. You guys, thank you for joining. Thank you for joining every week. We thank God for you all. God bless you all. See you later.